Hello, I want to welcome you to my talk about Austrian and European alternatives to palm oil and soy feed from tropical regions, opportunities and impacts. Thank you for you listening and moreover thank you to the organizers who make this happening during a very messy time. Thank you. Emilia Reis. Every se six seconds, a tropical rainforest area with the size of a football field is destroyed. 75,000 fires in Brazil have been documented. Climate emergency in Amazon has even been called out last year in 2019. And if you look at the consuming countries like the European Union, these source like beef and soy from Brazil, EG, and their emissions embodied like which Brazil has to account for and you can say that's a so-called spillover effect. The same is Palma and Malaysia and Indonesia. And if you look at the global impact of food and agriculture, food systems, for example, they cause almost 30% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Agriculture accounts for 70% of freshwater use and for 80% of global deforestation. And it is linked to the biodiversity loss on land, 70% and water, 50%. So some scientists say we are within the sixth mass extinction, within the Anthropocene. If you look at reptiles, birds, amphibians, mammals, land vertebrates, they are really uh, at risk to get extinct from 40 to 80% roughly, and mainly due to uh, human impacts. It means we, we grow commodities like palm oil and we source it and and, it, and the European Union imports it, as well as Austria. And Austria imports 158,000 tons per year from countries with a high biodiversity like Malaysia and Indonesia. And the palm oil, which comes to Austria, is mainly used, that's a surprise maybe, for the transport sector, 70%. And for the food sector, it's 16, respect, respectively like 21%. So these are the most, uh, the, crucial areas and Austria actually has a responsibility also regarding meat consumption uh, but if you look at the next map actually which is popping up you see like really the high consuming com countries in the global north, north because Africa maybe five kilograms per head per year and Austria with 63 kilograms per head per year is one of the high consuming countries and at the same time we also have an indirect consume of soil that means like soy feed of 63 kilograms per person per head. That means soy feed import is 600,000 tons per year. And this is for animal production only actually. And if you look at the countries where it's sourced from, it's one quarter from Brazil, Argentina is 20% and the US is like 20% of the soy, which is like imported by Austria and over 70% of everything is like genetically modified as well. And if you look now at the DLO and deforestation hotspots, you see like one of the biggest is actually in the Amazon, Cerrado, like in the South American region. And uh, in, the, in the next 10 years, there can be like 15 to 50 million hectares can get lost due to stocks like beef and, and soy, for example, but also palm oil in Indonesia, Malaysia. And if you look at the greenhouse gas emission of imported soy uh, by Austria, we see like 2 million tons of soy from 2 million tons of, um, uh, tons of uh, greenhouse gas emissions are caused, to the, are caused by the soy from overseas. And we can cut it by quarter if we substitute to, uh, to Austrian soy. The same for palm oil. Up to 2 million tons of CO2 emissions can be reduced um, to a quarter almost if you substitute to sunflower oil and most of it we can substitute of the palm oil imports to Austria. So that's like some key messages and results but how much more land would we need in Austria then? Actually if we could would cut meat by just 20 percent we would have enough land in Austria to fill protein, the protein gap regarding soy feed and if we cut food waste by just 20 percent we can have enough land in Austria for palm oil demand excluding full and SDG 3, 13, 14, 15 as a contribution as well by that. Um, some might say we can also use like um, 
uh, countries in the Eastern Europe, like Romania, but you see like what happens, like uh, soy monocultures are built and small scale farm, farmers are in danger. So there's a trouble with soy. So we have to think twice if we want to just make a shift to the Eastern European country, countries because we have associated plan, uh, problems with European alternatives, GMO soy, uh, fertilizer, synthetic ones, pesticides, and much of it is not organic. So you're not solving the problem at its roots. So it's no change in nutrition behavior. Minor co synergies is, is given. We need a paradigm shift. That means directly consuming more soy, for example. If we use nine kilogram plant protein for beef production, we get out five portions. For pigs, we get 12 portions. And for tofu, we get 68 portions. That means like 12, 12 uh, the time more than 12 times more than beef, for example, if you use it uh, for that beef production. And if you have to look at the ecological uh, impact, 95% less greenhouse gas emissions is emitted, for example, to a soy burger instead of a beef burger. And 96% less land is used, and even 93% less water is used within the production. So we have to change from a red meat-based world to a more green and more plant-based vegetarian or even vegan world that we eat like really less meat. It's good for heart, heart diseases, blood pressure, for diabetes type 2 to prevent that the diseases. Less meat means less heat as well, and food instead feed security is a main focus. So it's a win-win-win situation. Thank you for listening. So I know you want to read more of it, so here's the link for the Soil and Palmer report with an English summary, and you can also contact me, don't hesitate, and thank you. Stay healthy and safe, and enjoy the sustainability day. Bye.